Hi Gang, Scott here. This video is the next one in the series about blending modes in On One Photo Raw and On One Effects, talking about color dodge. If you haven't seen the introductory video for the series, you know, check the show notes. There's a playlist to link down there, and the playlist is growing as more videos in the series are added. And uh, color dodge is one of the lighten blending modes. It's one of the category that lightens things. And uh, I'll show you examples of where I find color dodge to be helpful in my photography, and hopefully it'll be helpful for you. Really quick, if you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Let's me know that this kind of content is uh, is what you're after. And if you're thinking about adding on one photo raw, one of the plugins, maybe upgrading your software to the latest version, check the show notes for an offer code. It'll save you some money, gives me some support to let me do more videos like this. Won't cost you anything extra. So color dodge, what is this blending mode? Uh, it, fundamentally, it is going to brighten things brighten colors, uh, reduce a little bit of contrast, and the net result is like a little more saturation in the midtones. Uh, now, what does that mean in, in practice? I'll show you a couple of examples where I find it to be useful in both a layered workflow as well as just a straight effects workflow. If you're just working with the effects module and just adding in effects filters, there's a way to tap in to color dodge and you know put it to good use. So uh, let's start with a layered example here in Photo Raw. So this image here, it, I, I like the image. It's you know it's a little dull. The colors are a little dull. And and one way to to work with color dodge is to like blend the photo with itself. So up in the layers area, I can duplicate the layer, and so now I have the same photo twice. Nothing has changed. You know the default is that normal mode. Show me all the pixels, and well, none of the pixels have changed. I just have two sets of them. But if I now switch into from normal to color dodge, you're going to see quite a bit of change. And for the moment, this is you know much too strong. But pay attention to what's going on with the, the greens on this uh, on these you know these roofing eaves. Normal color dodge. Those are getting much much brighter, right? Those are like that mid-tone areas. And then if I start to dial things back, you know, I can start to control the blend there. And you know that's starting to look you know much more attractive. Uh, and if I need to protect the highlights or certain areas that are getting a little bit blown out like this part here, I have my other masking tools available. I can use a luminosity mask to protect those highlights. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and try that. Just pop this on here, lumen, invert it so I'm protecting the highlights. You know, and then I'm getting that nice pop in the saturated areas of like the mid-tones of the greens by virtue of the color dodge before and after. And I still think I might want to protect those highlights just a bit more. But uh, but you're getting the idea of what color dodge can do. It can it can you know, pop the photo itself, just blending it with itself. And uh, there's, there's a way to do this in just the effects module. So uh, let me show you that. I'm going to show you the same photo, but using uh, the effects plugin. Like if you're using effects by itself as a standalone or you're using it as a plugin to other tools like you know, Lightroom, Capture One, etc., you can tap into this. So let me show you how this works. Here's that same photo. I've gone from Lightroom, sent this into On One Effects through the effects plugin. You can see I've just got effects and local because all I have is on one effects now. I'm not in Photo Raw, I'm just running on one effects as a plugin. Now I do have access to the layers and I could do the same thing. I could duplicate the layer like we saw before. Say, so, yeah, fine, create a layered document and then I can change the blending mode here. We saw that before, right? Well, you don't even have to do that much to tap into these blending options. Add a filter. My go-to for this is the color enhancer. And the reason is by default, the color enhancer makes no changes to the photo. So there's zero change here. All the sliders are set to zero. Nothing has modified. I can turn this off and on. We see no change whatsoever. Go to the gear menu and choose color dodge. You see that same impact. So what just happened? The way that the effects filter stack works is you start with your base photo, and you know, if you've done changes in other programs, Lightroom, Capture One, etc., you bring that into a plugin. You're starting there, and then as you feed those sets of pixels up through different filters, 
the filters modify them and the blending modes come into play. So if you haven't made any changes at all to the effect, like here with Color Enhancer, there's no changes to any of the sliders. But because that blending option, that blending mode here in the options is set to Color Dodge, it says, all right, I've received this set of pixels from my base photo, the one photo I have, and I'm going to mix it in this interesting way. And then we have those same controls, right? We saw this with the layers. I can take the opacity of that down. I can go in here and do that lumen invert I did before to kind of protect those highlights and start to play more and see those, you know, those, those greens punch up. Uh, if I need to play with density, I've got all these controls here. Uh, I can go into the other options and protect the highlights some. You've got all those controls there. And I'm doing that with just and effects filter. So quite handy. One other use case for color dodge is a form of a color grading. Uh, color grading, um, a lot of the blending options lend themselves to color grading. Color dodge is one of them. Let me show you an example of that. Use a different photo for this example. And here I will use the effects filters and you can do this in photo raw or on one effects. I'll add a photo filter which is a great way to do, you know, kind of color tinting. And uh, let's choose something warm. We'll choose this 85 here. Now, going into the blending options, switching that to color dodge, we get this really interesting looking, kind of, you know, it's a very good retro feel for this photo, right? You know, comparing with normal versus color dodge. Once again, we're using that advantage of how the layer, uh, not the layer, the filter stack works in effects where everything you've done and every change you've made up to the next filter, those pixels are fed into the next filter. So in this case, we had our base photo, kind of like, you know, imagine it's floating down here and we fed it into this photo filter, added a color tint and also changed how that color is going to interact, how it's going to blend with the pixels coming in. And then we have all of the controls that we're used to. We can fine tune that to make sure that it's not getting like, you know, too crazy. If it's too, uh, too hot for your taste, you can turn it down. We can change our, our, our type blend there. I didn't kind of like that, uh, that, that almost that not quite neon, but, uh, but strong look that it gave with, uh, with the 85. It just, that felt pretty good for this photo. Uh, but that is how color dodge works. It, in a nutshell, will reduce contrast some, really kind of bring out saturation in the midtones, and then from there, you know, experiment to play. You know, mixing it with, uh, mixing a photo with itself in Color Dodge is a good way to work with it. You can do color grading by using a photo filter. You could also do this with a color fill layer if you prefer a layered workflow. Works the same way. I uh, hope you found the video useful. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.